This lecture is a continued discussion of generative probabilistic models for text clustering. In this lecture, we're going to continue talking about the text, cluster, uh, text clustering, particularly uh, the generative probabilistic models. So this is a slide that you have seen earlier, where we uh, have written down the likelihood function for a document uh, with two uh, distributions in a two-component mixture model for document clustering. Now, uh, in this lecture, we're going to uh, generalize this uh, to uh, include the K clusters. Now, if you look at the formula and think about the question, how to generalize it, you will realize that all we need is to add more terms like what you have seen here. Right? So you can just add more thetas and the probabilities of uh, thetas and the probabilities of generating D from those thetas. So this is precisely what we are uh, going to use. And this is the general presentation of the mixture model for uh, document clustering. Right? So as in all cases, we follow these steps in using a generative model. First, let's think about the, uh, our data. Right? So in this case, our data is a collection of documents, uh, n documents denoted by d sub i. And then we talk about a model, think about a model. In, in this case, uh, we design a mixture of k unigram language models. It's a little bit different from the uh, topic model. And, but uh, we have similar parameters. We have a set of theta i's to denote the word distributions corresponding to the k unigram language models. We have p of each theta i as a probability of selecting uh, each of the k distributions to generate the document. Now note that although our uh, goal is to uh, find the clusters, and we actually uh, have used a more general notion of a probability of each uh, cluster. And this, as you see later, would allow us to assign a document to the, uh, the cluster that has the highest probability of being uh, able to generate the document. So uh, as a result, we can also recover some other um, interesting uh, properties, uh, as you will see later. So the model basically would make the following assumption about the generation of a document. We first choose a theta i according to probability of theta i, and then generate all the words in the document using this distribution. Note that it's important that that we use this distribution to generate all the words in the document. This is very different from a uh, topic model. So the likelihood function would be uh, like what you are seeing here. Right. So the, you can take a look at the, uh, the formula here. We have used a uh, different uh, uh, notation here in the second line of this uh, of this equation. And you can see now uh, the notation has been changed to use uh, a unique word in the vocabulary in the product instead of a particular position in the document. So from x sub j to uh, w uh, is a change of notation. And this uh, change allows us to uh, show the estimation formulas more easily. And you have seen this change also in uh, the topic model presentation. But it's basically still just a product of the probabilities of all the words. Right? And so with the likelihood function, now we can talk about the, how to do parameter estimation. Here we can simply use the maximum likelihood estimator. Right? So that's uh, just a, a standard way of doing things. So all uh, should be familiar to you now. It's just a different model. So after we have estimated parameters, how can we then allocate uh, clusters to the documents? Well, uh, let's take a look at the, this situation more closely. So we just uh, repeated the parameters here for this mixture model. Now, uh, if you think about the, what we can get by estimating such a model, we can actually get more information than uh, what we need for uh, doing clustering, right? So, um, theta i, for example, represents the content of cluster i. This is uh, actually a byproduct. It can help us summarize what the cluster is about. If you look at the top terms, 
in this cluster or in this order distribution, and they will tell us what the cluster is about. And P of theta i can be interpreted as indicating the size of cluster because it tells us how likely a cluster uh, would be used to generate the document. The more likely a cluster is used to generate the document, we can assume uh, the larger the cluster size is. Right. Note that unlike in PLSA, and this probability of theta i is not dependent on d. Now you may recall that the topic choice in each document actually depends on d. That means each document can have a potentially different choice um, of topics. But here we have a generic uh, choice probability for all the, uh, the documents. But of course, given a particular document, we still have to infer uh, which topic is more likely to generate the document. So in that sense, we can still have a document-dependent um, uh, probability of uh, clusters. So now let's look at the key problem of assigning uh, documents to clusters or assigning clusters to documents. Right? So let's look compute the C sub D here. And this will take a, a one of the values in the range of 1 to k to indicate which cluster should be assigned to D. Now, let's, uh, first, you might think about uh, a way to use likelihood only, and that is to assign D to the cluster corresponding to the topic of theta i that most likely has been used to generate D. Right, so that means we're going to choose one of those distributions that gives D the highest probability. In other words, we'll see which um, distribution has a content that matches our D the best. Uh, intuitively, that makes sense. However, this uh, approach does not consider the size of clusters, which is also available to us. And so a better way is to use the likelihood um, together with a prior. In this case, the prior is P of theta i. And together, uh, that is, we're going to use the base formula to compute the posterior probability of theta given d. And if we mm, choose theta based on this posterior probability, and we would have the following formula that you see here on the bottom of this slide. And in this case, we're going to choose the theta that has a large P of uh, theta i, that means a large cluster, and also a high probability of generating d. So we're going to favor a cluster that's large and also consistent with, um, with the document. And that um, intuitively makes sense because uh, the chance of a document being in a large cluster is generally higher than in a small cluster. So this means once we can estimate the parameters of the, uh, the model, then we can easily solve the problem of document clustering. So next, uh, we have to discuss how to actually compute the estimate of uh, the model. Mm -hmm.